the day is here finally after years it feels like years of planning development as we followed this with construction updates over a month worth of vlogs cody the world of jumanji we step in for the very first time and i cannot tell you how excited I am. even since i last did an update look all this floor's done and you can see mandrel mayhem going round and we've got a bit of entertainment going on as well look here welcome us in super super excited aren't we yeah um we've been watching this from afar for a long long time and um yeah finally we get inside and we can have a look around and see how it is yeah blown away blown away by it absolutely blown away of course, if you follow us on uh, chesnantonworld.co.uk, you'll be able to see all the pictures and everything that we put up. But just look at it all. We'll go and check out first the Mandrill Mayhem. Now then, when the ride opens to the public, we are at a press event. Again, massive, massive thank you to Chesnanton for inviting us to this, and we've been able to make it today as well. Um, it's going to be virtual queue only so you need to bear this in mind you will have to uh, go onto the app or scan the qr code at the entrance in order to get a time slot to ride it if you do not do that there is no queue open for the ride throughout the day so please 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 bear that in mind we're hoping to get on it a couple of times today aren't we hopefully we're hoping to get on it on a couple of times today but i just think the area just looks fantastic you can hear the sounds and music and things behind us um, also yeah just sounding incredible really really is sounding incredible but it's just amazing that all this time and here we are yeah what one are you looking forward to the most mandrel mayhem yeah it's a stupid question really isn't it it really is a stupid question and it's even the first time that we've seen it do this So of course it launches backwards out the station, comes back through here, comes back down. We have another launch here to regulate the speed to go up the spike. And then it reverses back. And it will again hit another charge and you see you can see the impact that booster has to send it back through and back to the station love it love it so yeah join us we'll give you our opinion we'll show you some bits around and um yeah can't wait can't wait now to finally get on mandra mayhem All the rides here in the world of Jumanji are a 1.2 meter height restriction, including Mumba Strike, which is the SBF Miami ride. Sorry, okay. I, say, I think it's the first time I've seen an SBF one. Um, Ostrich Stampede is also an SBF jumper. Might be the first time I've seen one of those as well. But look how good these entrances are. This is the kind of thing you, uh, you want to see. They really are. And we'll get some shots of the Mumba Strike going around. So this is our first ever go on Mumba Strike. And it's nice to see a nice themed queue area here. Look at these, look. 
I like this. Well, it's a, a long old queue line when you're going to be caught in this one further down the line. Oh my. But again, the appreciation for sort of what they've put in, even the side detail on the side of the building. So this is the uh, Jumanji shop. We will have a look in there later as well. And you're going to get good views of Mandrill Mayhem from here as you're queuing for this. But we've been looking at this for ages and it's only when you're up close now and you can kind of see the detail that's gone into that. It is fantastic. It really, really is fantastic. I love that. And the ride actually is blocked off quite nicely. So there's not gonna be a lot of, you know, if you don't see the ride on the way in, for instance, and run to the queue, it's not gonna be a lot of it, but here we go, first ride. I will say I was pleasantly surprised by that SBF Miami there that was quite good yeah, yeah, was I enjoyed right. that so it has actually got a bit of a kick to it I think when you look at it initially you might think well you know it's not it doesn't look that quick but I disagree it is and I think the detail as well it's magnificent around it I mean something like this though it just looks the way the walls and everything has been finished and the the painting on it and even these little bits at the back they don't really need to be there to be honest they don't really add anything for when you're queuing or not they're just here for this benefit really really add to it I absolutely love it. I genuinely think that is a great, great family attraction and it hits the market perfectly for Chesington. And you've got to note these as well, look. Love them. Absolutely love them. It's a little detail sometimes, the little details that make it. So we are still waiting for Mandrill Mayhem to open. Ostrich Stampede um, might be our next ride, which is also open. I love the 3D signs as well. They are. They are awesome. So another 1.2 ride, this is an FBF. Jumper, as we've seen. And this is our next experience. Free wide as well, the capacity on this actually is really, really good. Thoroughly looking forward to these. As many know, I don't genuinely don't like these rides as a general. However, however, we're making an exception. Look at this look. Now, we'll say the ambient audio is fantastic as you walk around the whole area. I think when you look at it from here, people forget the area isn't huge. It's probably why they've decided on what they've decided on for the, uh, for the coaster type, but the audio and the ambience is fantastic. And of course, the look on these as well, the little ostrich head poking out the top is brilliant. Yeah, the capacity should be brilliant on this. It really should. go on Mandra Mayhem for our first ever ride. Now then Ostrich Stampede, um, I'm going to reserve judgment on sort of the length of it for the simple reason that they're clearly still testing it, they're only loading two seats. Um, I guess detail, they're only loading two seats at the moment, so yeah it's a little bit difficult to say to be honest with you, however that at the same time is clearly quite a powerful ride and on being quite a powerful ride it's actually quite quiet as well to be to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, enjoyed it but the cycle isn't good yet. We've been looking at the side of this building for ages and everyone was worried it was going to look like a tin shed. I have to say I don't think it does particularly. Do you think it does? I love these, I love these trees that are going through the middle here, they really break up nicely and um, we've got a bit of detail and, and, and scenery on it as well, kind of looking for um, really animals and things that you would find in the jungle Jumanji world. Obviously nods to the film there in the locker base and the map, the map looks fantastic. It's our first time Cody on Jumanji, well Mandrel Mayhem, sorry, sorry Mandrel Mayhem. I will say, just looking at the lighting, this is fantastic. Really looks stunning. It's quite nice it is open down the sides. It'd be particularly nice during the um, 
during the winter periods when it's just generally dark because I don't think there's going to be a lot of light in here apart from what you see down there. Look at that. Look at that. That is magnificent. That really is. Right, but we've got to go on now. That is a couple of rides done on Mandrill Mayhem. Oh my, oh my. That is much, much quicker than you think it is. Much, much quicker than you think it is. And much, much more disorientating than you think it is as well. Shooting out the back of the station is done at some pace, particularly with the dip. And then the transition between backwards and forwards that quick is really quite something. Now it does lose a little bit of pace coming back into the station, but once you hit the launch in the station, oh my God, that thing shoots out, absolutely shoots out around the course. It is boosted again to go up the spike. It is boosted again to go backwards really, really quick. Now the vest restraints are always gonna be a uh, controversial point. You love them. Yeah. I find them okay. I'm not, I, I'm not against them, but I know they're a controversial point, but that roller coaster is fabulous. Cod. What do you think? It's very good. Really good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Really good. Favourite bit? It's got to be the corkscrew. Not corkscrew. The barrel roll. The barrel roll. The barrel roll's your favourite bit? Yeah. Of course, yeah, it has got an inversion. It is the first inversion on a coaster at Chesington ever. And it takes it twice. For me, it's coming out of here. The transition from backwards to forwards and then the launch through the station is something else. Really, genuinely something else. I'm staggered on how quick it is. It's going to catch a lot of people by surprise, particularly maybe the little ones at 1.2 or parents that are joining them on. It's going to catch them by surprise because it's much quicker than it looks. It really, really is. Yeah, what I think all right. What did you use? Uh, running. Speed. <laughs> speed. speed. It's all about speed. Highly speed. Yeah. Um, what did you maybe use to defeat those mangoes? I don't know. It's your sheer skill, isn't it? <laughs> or lack of. It's all about speed. Okay, all about Just get speed. away as quick as possible. Right, I shall build up my speed. Well, congratulations and have a lot of fun competing through your next challenge. And I hope to see you on the other side. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, adventurers. Right, we're going back in again. <laughs> How good is that looking? Absolutely superb. The lighting in here is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. It kind of dims and goes out. This looks really intimidating, right here. And here is the Mandrill Mayhem car. And geeky bits that you just can't see anywhere else but that was absolutely stunning
have quite a lot on here as well. I do love the map. I think that is fantastic. There's quite a few of them around the area too. Really does represent. And we will have a closer look as well at some of the other bits and pieces and, and kind of show you around. As you said, the area is not huge, but it is going to be really, really popular, even to sort of the little bits that you haven't seen yet, the little climbing bits and uh, you know some of the puzzles in particular, we will show you. But yeah, we just done Mandrill Mayhem again, Cody, didn't we? Yeah. And we managed to get back road. Now, for those asking, there's no queue for either. You can't say which end you want to be. Um, you're sat on a number before you go into the station. You're only called into the station when the train's ready. So you don't queue in the station at all, or you certainly don't at the moment. Um, because of that, you can't really get a lot of good shots either, to be fair with you. It's quite difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Now then, we did the backwards one. It's a very, very different experience. It's a lot more disor... Uh, is it? Is it more disorientating? No. It's probably not. Actually, I think it's probably less disorientating than going the other way. I didn't really like it compared to the other way. I think it's just as good. Just as good? Yeah. Equally as good? Equally. Equally. Pretty much. Okay, so Cody's on the equally as good. Going up there and facing upside down on that bit is rather nice. I mean, that is quite special to be fair with you. And then going around this bit backwards, as you see these guys go around now, again, very, very disorientating going backwards. My biggest issue is this bit. I think it was really boring. Yeah, I just thought it was a little bit dull going up here and doesn't pick up again. It's quite nice to do the reverse bit facing forwards and it's quite nice and you really, really, really notice it when you hit this booster here in the back seats or as they are there, the front seats coming forward, but I'm still classing that very much as the back of the train. You really, really notice it then as you go back round there. Now the thing is, going through the spike over here, going through the spike over there, is really insane in that seat. However, I don't think it detracts from the fact that you still feel you're going up the spike and you feel the power of the launch going through the station when you're on the other one. So for me, that trumps it. But when you get to ride Mandrill Mayhem, hopefully you get to ride where you want to ride. Let us know what you think, but we're both impressed. We've done it three times. We've got a couple of hours left yet and we're gonna get some more rides in still. So we do have a giant map behind. However, we do have entertainment today. And these guys have been fantastic. We can hear them all over the park. is the old ripsaw truck that everyone's been going on about for the last few months it's turned out to be a outlet so you can get a giant turkey leg for 14 pound with sauces and everything hot dogs 13.50 the turkey legs are massive as we come down this side you can see obviously the flooring's been done the flooring has been quite consistent with what they're doing and then there's just little sort of nods if you will to the movie and of course there is a little assault course as well for the kids when they come in here so it's not rocket science, I say that, I'll probably fall over, but you can go across these and come off the other side. There are some bars along here, people are used to them as benches, they're not benches, they're I mean, bars. There aren't um, really any benches though. No, there are no benches, uh, there's a couple, so you've got one up there, you've got one that this couple are on Lots here, but there could probably be due with some more um, some more sit down, uh, sit down things. Obviously the massive World of Jumanji sign here. I will walk the other end so it's not upside down. And of course these models, which also we've been looking at for the last four or five months from the outside world. And here they are up close. Here's the crocodile. And we'll pan now to the world of Jumanji. It's a nice center point this, it really is a nice center point. Um, I do find it peculiar that one's over there. We will go over to that in a second. And we've got the Rhino, obviously all audio included. And then I'd, I don't know why this one's not here. Answers on a postcard. But then we've got the um, 
gorilla there, and of course the entrance, the may uh, mandrel mayhem over there. Now, of course, the queue at the moment is not being used, and I'm not, I'm not overly convinced it's going to be used either while the time tickets are on. We might go a case where they go in there, but again, it's so nicely finished. It's just not your normal, your normal tarmac. It's been so nicely finished with this new resin they're putting around. It's quite a deep queue, and you think it covers all of this right the way back to the station and round as well. But I tell you now, just not going to get bored of looking at this coming down here. And of course, this sight of the uh, Jaguar, which we've been seeing for a long, long time. As you can see, when you go through the queue lines, there are various games as well, various clues and bits that you can find. How good does it look? And the sun's coming out as well at the world of Jumanji. Much, much quicker than it looks, I can assure you. Much, much quicker. I think it's time to go again. So there are a few things in here to keep you occupied. One of them is to create your own Jumanji character. So as you walk the Mandrill Mayhem, you will notice some of the queue lines and you will notice some initials. So of course, initials, all relate to characters from the Jumanji film. Now I have to say, I'm not brilliant with some of the characters. I won't lie to you there. However, things like a Ruby Roundhouse is quite obvious um, that you can see down here and various others and they litter the whole one. So where we just think sometimes that they put a fence in and it's a fence that doesn't really mean anything, actually, some real thoughts got into this. So there is a nod to Alan Parrish on the wall, which is from the original film. Now take into account that this one particularly goes with the later films. It's quite cool that they've given a nod to the original on here, but did you spot it on your way in? Because if you go on the other one, you may not have seen it. Now we've got a lot of games here in the world of Jumanji as well. You yeah, test your strength right the way to the usual suspects, the barrel and the uh, knock everything down. You've got the machines and of course you've got the uh, shop as well. 
got a little bit of extra merchandise in actually because we hadn't seen this one any other one that's a children's one you've got a full-size game as well which is 130 pounds there as well as various other bits and pieces which we've seen too Gems on that end. I think they are. Yeah, yeah, they're little gems, little gem bags. Six pound for a little gem bag. Mm. And of course the shirt as well. The shirt is another one which wasn't in the main shop. Down by the queue line for Mandrill Mayhem, you have a couple of trucks, but in the couple of trucks we have a gas station as well. Now obviously there are some really obvious ones, calling it Jaguar, uh, Jaguar Petroleum. However, there are some more subtle ones as well, including the sale sign. Did you spot these? 2017, when the first film was released, or the first new version of the film released, and then 2019, when the next one was released. Did you spot that? Let us know. That concludes our coverage from the world of Jumanji, opening for 2023, brand new at Chessington World of Adventures for the 15th of May. Honestly, I am actually taken back, genuinely taken back by how good this looks. The area looks really, really good, given what it, you know, what, what the basis is. They've done a marvellous job with it. They really have in sort of shoring it up. And you, you wouldn't think that two years ago this was just grass with picnic tables and things on. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say, it still needs a little bit more. It does still need a little bit more work doing. The grass has obviously got to grow, the trees have got to grow, etc., etc. You're just gonna to have to bypass that because what they've done is fantastic, it really is. The two support rides first, Mumba Strike and Ostrich Stampede, fit the demograph perfectly, absolutely perfectly, and they will be a welcome addition to help with queues around the park, not just in the world of Jumanji. Now, of course, what everyone wants to know, Mandrill Mayhem. Now, we did give our quick review of it earlier. However, let me just say, I think it is a fantastic coaster. And I'm not just saying that, you know, I know people will say, you always go Chesington, blah, 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 but you'll know I'll be just as critical if I need to be, and I'm not gonna be, because it is amazing. It really, really is amazing, and it ticks a lot of boxes. Again, you're gonna have to put what your feelings are, the throughput aside, it's irrelevant. The coaster is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And for me, I know what the enthusiasts are gonna say, yeah, it's a great starting point for the family. Yeah, you know, if you wanna go upside down, etc., etc. But there's so much more to that. There's a lot of launch coasters, for instance, that younger people can't go on, even ones that don't invert. It's not just a case of taking the inversion into account. The inversion's a benefit by all means, but that's not what it's about. The ride really pushes the family limit, not just for the children, but also for the adults. Not everyone that comes to Chesington is going to be used to this kind of ride. And it's not just a case of it launches and you go upside down. It's a case of it goes backwards, it goes forwards. Um, you know, there's, there's sudden movements, there's sudden turns, plus it's got a burst of speed, plus it goes upside down. You take it in both directions. The transition, particularly on the spike behind me, from forward to backwards, is quite something. It really is quite something. It even made my head spin, and I'm used to these coasters, let alone people that come to Chesington are used to Vampire, Scorpion Express. Even Rattlesnake is really tame, and Dragon's Fury. And even you might get a you know, good spin on Dragon's Fury, it's not gonna prepare you for this. And that is where I want Chesington to be, pushing the boundaries, 100% pushing the boundaries. And the coaster does that. I'm sorry, but the coaster does that. The area looks good. The coaster is brilliant. The two support rides are great. Yeah, there's some kinks to be ironed out, as there always is with new rides and new areas, but we think it's fantastic. Of course, I haven't brought Kurt along for the ride yet. He may think differently. He's in Florida at the moment, so he's doing other things, but the IP has been used perfectly. You can see the Jaguar behind, and of course, we've covered this construction right the way through. Let us know what you think. Are you coming to World of Jumanji? Have you already been to experience it? And yeah, let us know in the comments below. We really, really want to hear the feedback on this. If you've enjoyed the video, please, please, please give it a like. Consider subscribing to us. Um, we followed this, as I said, for nearly two years now. And this is the pinnacle end of it, and we love it. Thanks for joining us here on UK Theme Parks. My name's Adam, and we'll see you next time.